Shall we see if about quarter after 11, how many come in the door thinking hey, it's quarter after 10? <laughs> <laughs> I said that eight o'clock. Everything that you will need for the service is in your bulletin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first command is here is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. For there is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God in our name. Most merciful God, God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people, and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I 
will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. <coughs> Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord.
called 1 800 or so you said it gets too nice when I'm all done. No. Uh, it is Feed My Sheep's 40th anniversary. They started in 1983 with a very, very small operation, and look where they are today. And that has been down a road of a lot of work, a lot of people volunteering, and even with storms, uh, they're back and strong. And I wanted to point out some things, maybe a little history, give you an idea if you're not real sure or familiar with Feed My Sheep, and what we do in cooperation with them as part of the ministry from this parish. First of all, we just want to ask, who in here is on a biscuit brigade? Real good. Who helps with making the bag lunches on the second Sunday? Say, so, I think you are already involved with this ministry, and it's what we call a quiet ministry. It gets done, it serves, and there's no fanfare about it, no trumpets being blown or bells ringing about it. But Feed My Sheep saw a need 40 years ago in this community for those who were poor or homeless who had no resources to go find something to eat. So they started this ministry. And they have served thousands upon thousands of people over the years. In 2005, I think we all remember that year, uh, Miss Katrina came through and took Feed My Sheep out like it did most of these buildings. But they rebuilt. And uh, maybe some of you don't know this, but in that period of time, a uh, few of us uh, under the leadership of Congress at the time, we wrote a grant through Episcopal Relief and Development for them for $175,000 which basically put their whole kitchen in. So uh, we've had a strong relationship with them for a long time. And there's been many people in this building who has at one point or another sat on the board of this wonderful ministry. Oh, there's, and Jan is the present person with that uh, duty, as well as uh, being the liaison between them and us. Um, and we thank her for that. Um, feed My Sheep um, years ago now, seems like to me um, there was no meals and it's still that way, offered through them on Saturdays and Sundays so everybody who was in that situation had no place to go for food so I got this right idea after I was just ordained well, why don't we serve breakfast at least once a month so they at least have something and just see how that goes. So we did it actually over in the parish hall. We cook, we cook breakfast. Uh, uh, Brian who comes at eight o'clock. That guy can cook some pancakes. Like that. <coughs> and you're like this big. And one week we'd be doing pancakes. The next time with my pancakes and sausage, yeah, whatever. And they really appreciated it. We had good crowds. And they would just sit there and we would walk around talking. Sort of get to know who they were and what their needs are and that kind of thing. And finally, a couple of them got real brave and they came to me and they said, Look, can you maybe do this over at Feed My Sheep because there's so many people who just cannot walk that far in here? I said, Oh, I guess I never really gave that a thought. I said, I'm sorry. So we got it worked out with Feed My Sheep and we said, We're just using the parking lot, we're bringing everything packaged stuff. And we'll just distribute it from a car van or whatever we had to go. And they were happy that we were going to do it. And then, as that went along for a few months, uh, I think at least some of the people in here would remember Dr. Edward Graham, who been his wife for a long time, of course, was here and very involved with things like that. Uh, he came to me and says, Why don't we do this every Saturday? I said, It's not the budget. He goes, oh. So a short time after that, he gives me a blank check and goes, let's get this done. Ooh. Okay. So now that's why we do it every week. We have the different biscuit brigades we on Saturday mornings early, make all the uh, sausage biscuits and everything else we put in the bags, and then take it over to feed my sheep and hand it out. And there's somebody there, it only takes about five minutes. 
to uh, hand this stuff out. And then uh, it got to the point where it was kept on growing and uh, we had to start doing some fundraising of our own. Uh, and that's about the time that I was moving on to St. Paul's and Patrick asked me, well, who can we get to do what you do? I don't know if she hates me or loves it, but I said, how about Jan? Well, then she came up with the idea of doing fundraising, and we did events over at Murky Waters and all kinds of different things. And that's how the budget keeps getting fed through those fundraisers, uh, as well as down the budget puts money in the budget for that as well, because it's a very important ministry. And also with uh, the sandwich for day, which packed all the lunches this morning after the 8 o'clock service, and after this service over, they'll take them over there and hand them out to people. Now, one funny thing, when we first started going over there for breakfast, we were we were so just, and it was cold, and it was winter time, and we wanted to do things right. We would take those great big coffee pots, mm. and we'd take them down <laughs> so it would spill out, and we took coffee and the creamer and everything over there, and they were all like drawn pots of coffee or cups of coffee. And after a while, it was like, when it got spilled on the third or fourth time, they would eh, just take water and juice. And then they're sealed up. So that's, we got away from that. But, uh, we were always trying to make it like home. But sometimes that's not practical. But all of you, uh, I have to remind myself, that it was so perfect with that gospel reading, that as a church, <laughs> what we say to these folks is, Come to the well, and I will give you the water. You'll never be thirsty again. And that's what we're doing by saying, here, have some food, have water, have juice. You know, we, we care about you. Unfortunately, we just can't do this every day. But we're part of a ministry that does do this every day. And that's the silent ministry. And that is so perfect because it's like, in two weeks ago, the gospel like, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Just do it in secret. For your father who sees in secret will give you your reward. And that's uh, what happens when we get involved with things like that. Even as a parish as a whole. Because, you know, we just hang one more little star in the community that says, we care. And we're there, as we hear every Sunday, love your neighbor. And that's what we're here for. You want to add anything? You want to bet? Um, one thing I want to say before anything else is that uh, anytime anybody asks me how or why I got involved with Feed My Sheep and all, all is because of this man right here. And I always considered him my mentor. And when he was talking about passing it over to me when he was going to St. Paul, in my mind, it's kind of like Humphrey Bogart saying to me, here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> That's how I keep lighting in my brain. So that, um, because it was a special, and it is, continues to be my honor and my blessing uh, to be a part of this group and the organization that we go through and getting it to happen. I can't say enough about how special each one of the different, and when I say different, I mean different, Biscuit Brigade teams that we have, we have variation on a theme like you wouldn't believe because on any given Saturday you go in, there's a different methodology going on on how to make the biscuits, how to wrap them, how to put them in the bag, the order that you're going to put the stuff in that bag. You do not mess with Texas. When you go in there, you follow the lead of the group that's in there and you do what they do because they're doing it well. Um, one thing I want to mention about Feed My Sheep quickly is that tomorrow night between five and seven o'clock at St. Thomas in the big recreation room there at the front, the big beautiful glass room, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary of Feed My Sheep. I'm very proud to be a part of it for the last five years. Um, every day, I don't know if you know all of what we do at Feed My Sheep, but every single day we deliver 330 something hot meals to homes in Gulfport. We have seven different routes that cover the different area all the way up as far as Orange Grove and back. 
Uh, we have one man that takes 90 something trays up to Orange Grove every week. Uh, I mean, every day of every week. Um, in addition to that, we serve hot meals in the dining hall somewhere around 200. So something like 500 hot meals a day are prepared there and served. We're the largest soup kitchen in Mississippi at this point. Um, and I'm very proud of the things that we do. I would love for anybody, and they really, all the board really urged to me that they really want St. Peter's to make a good show in there because we're such a part, as you can, Scott was saying a minute ago, of how we've been a part of it from the beginning. Plus, if you've served, um, Diane and Tommy are here, uh, and they drive around once a day, uh, once a week, in Gaston Point, I cover Friday on that week. Um, we have, uh, there's a couple other church members who help regularly in the dining hall, and I can't change, think of their names. Once Scott gave this to, was leaving us, and we knew that we had had the money to start it, then we wanted to be a self-sustaining charity. We wanted the, the Biscuit Brigade to be self-sustaining, and that was the birth of the Murky Mondays. And if you were here during that time, you know how much fun those were. Um, that's not going to happen again. <laughs> uh, the hospitality and restaurant industry kind of went through a morphing during the COVID, so that's just not an option anymore. But there is a plan on the table right now, and you'll know about it very soon. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was that um, during the course of COVID, we ex we expanded our uh, association with other entities. In 2017, 2018, at the end of 17 and going into 18, was the first time that we ever provided breakfasts for the Salvation Army when the cold weather shelter is open. So that's a five-year association with them now that we've sustained. And then, as you know, if you were here last year, we actually had the shelter housed in our parish hall. And that was quite an event. We, if you, they were only open three times this year. <laughs> we, we, we got the winter season because we were we were open a lot last year, and this was a total church involvement um, event. Because any time I called any person in this church, I had help immediately and things that I needed of towels or whatever. Um, we joined together with Extend a Hand, Help a Friend, which is Jeffrey Hollins, who's now a state legislator in Jackson, and Janine Casey. They came over and helped me the first few weekends that we were doing. We never stopped doing Biscuit Brigade but one Saturday, and we recouped and had it the next week. Um, they came and helped us until I found the people in the church who would help during that time. Um, then the, our other one coordination that we made was with Pastor Bill. Jane Glenn knows him well because the three of us cook breakfast together. He is the pastor at Little Rock Baptist Church on 15th Street, so on our street over in Gaston Point. And he came in and cooked our hot grits every morning. So we have extended, I think, what we do and including and in working with other entities that's made our effort bigger and better by virtue of the fact that we have included other people in. We have several people who come in and cook on Biscuit Brigade who are not members. Now, if you have always wanted to get up at five o'clock on a Saturday morning and get dressed <laughs> and go cook sausage and biscuits, and I know there are a lot of you out there, um, this is your opportunity. I am uh, heading the third Saturday Biscuit Brigade for a while, and it's going to be Biscuit Brigade Boot Camp. I have like five or six new people starting, and until a leader emerges in that group, we're going to do two new and different things. I would not dare introduce that into my already established teams <laughs> because I know heads would explode. But um, anyway, they don't have any preconcepts, so I can try, they can be my guinea pigs. I still have one dream um, that I want us to try to accomplish this year, and that is there are some people out in the community who could benefit from getting a hot sausage biscuit on Saturday morning, too. I have some people who don't have other, that we deliver to just in Gaston Point, who don't have other food coming in on the weekend. 
I'm going to work on that this year and try to get us a mobile unit that would uh, deliver 15, maybe 20 homes on a Saturday morning with the sausage biscuits. But um, here again, thank you to Scott for being my everlasting mentor. And thank you, Jan. I'll finish by saying I pray God's spirit will just increase in your souls as we continue this kind of work in the community. Amen? Amen. Amen.
May their suffering produce endurance, and endurance produce character, and character produce hope that does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Come, let us sing to the Holy One. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation, offering grateful thanksgiving, especially for those celebrating birthdays. To Kim, to Catherine, and Susan. While we were sinners, Christ died for us, reconciling all humanity to God. Give your water of eternal life to all who have died, especially those we now remember aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For Janet, Mitchell, Ingrid, James, Sylvan, and Gerald. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. Praise God, Guide your church to draw comfort from the deep wells of your refreshing presence, O God, that we may share in Christ's work of reconciliation and give unto others the living water of your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Speaking of youth, next week they're having a bonfire on the beach. You're going to do a beach cleanup and have a bonfire. So if anybody has some spare firewood, if you just bring it during the week and put it out here in the courtyard, they will greatly appreciate it. Now don't phone somebody's yard cut down there. Only phone calls about the so, uh, In your bulletin, there is uh, a booklet almost of everything coming up. Um, Rotary's Walkathon, which is March 31st for Cassie Nets, it raises money for that ministry. And then April 1st, which is a Saturday, from 8.30 to 3.30, right here at St. Peter's, uh, we will have a day of dialogue. And uh, a lot of that is a very wonderful way that, that is put into words about racial reconciliation and a lot of other things. So it's really worth to come and have that dialogue. Lunch will be served as like $3. On Palm Sunday, of 
course, we'll have the litany of the palms at 8 and 10 30, but the bell choir will be doing the lessons and carols at 5 30 on Palm Sunday, which is April 2nd. Okay. And also, there's a tentative schedule for Holy Weeks in here. And if you want to go to the dialogue uh, on uh, April 1st, there's a little form on the back that we'd like you to fill that out and send it into the office or put it into play by next week so they know how many people are going to be there so they can prepare food and that kind of thing and have materials on board. That ECW Tuesday at noon in the parish hall, right? Tuesday, like the day after tomorrow, Tuesday? Yes. The day after tomorrow? Yes. Yes. Okay. Describe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
service continues in your book. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in the remembrance that Jesus Christ our Lord. In these holy mysteries, he gives us a pledge of eternal life and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Christ. The body of Christ. <laughs>
Sunday.